Thank you. From this cafe, you can see one of the most spectacular views of Melbourne. You can see its parks and gardens, its bridges, the city buildings, the sporting grounds, and even rowers on the Yarra. It's all here on the wall, on this map. A map that started as a dream and became an obsession for Melinda Clark. Well, it actually started back in 1986. I'd just arrived home from travelling, um, you know, backpacking around Europe and America. And I picked up this great map of Los Angeles. And uh, when I got back to Melbourne, I thought, wouldn't it be great to have one of these of Melbourne? After investing thousands of hours of work and her life savings, Melinda's achievement is this character map of Melbourne, clothed in its buildings. From a windsurfer on St Kilda Beach to a cyclist beside the Yarra, it's all in print, describing in detail what life in Melbourne is all about. Not only is this map a piece of art, it's now an historical document. Not since this 1880 engraving by Samuel Calvert has a panoramic character map of Melbourne been produced. A lot of the buildings are still the same. We've got Customs House here, um, exhibition buildings. Actually, Five years ago, Melinda chose artist Deborah Young to help her fulfil her dream. Together they worked in a converted garage at the back of Melinda's mother's home. The biggest hurdle was we didn't know what we were doing. We just had to learn along the way. We were initially on a very, very limited budget, so it was just what we could get together and we approached different tourist authorities and, and different people that, that gave us information and it was, yeah, it was a culmination of, of just big borrowing and stealing sometimes. offers the best bird's eye view of Melbourne, so Melinda soon became accustomed to 5am wake-up calls. And armed with camera and film, it was off to work on one of Chris Dewhurst's sunrise flights. I understand why you like the balloon so much now. Good. How many photos did you take? Uh, about 3,000 altogether from, from the balloon, yes. Whereabouts? Well, um, we where's took, the perimeters? Where's the perimeters? It's, it's, it's about a five kilometre perimeter around the actual central city. It was the best place to do the city shots. Um, and uh, we would get, I'd get different suburbs um, on different days depending where we were flying. The rest of it was done um, from the ground. We walked every street in Melbourne that we were going to be drawing on here. And, um, and just took thousands and thousands of photographs, 7,000 in, in total altogether with the aerials and, and the ground ones. It was Deborah who had the difficult task of translating the photographs into a drawing. It um, got easier as I went around the drawing. <laughs> I don't know how many thousands of buildings are on that drawing, but there, there must be quite a few hundred, 100,000, I think. The building boom in Melbourne in the late 80s presented a further challenge. Deborah drew Melbourne Central on uh, way before it was even started and uh, from these photographs of their models and plans, this is 101 Collins Street, that wasn't started when we were first drawing that area. All of these are completed now but there are some buildings on here, uh, the ABC building, that's what it's going to look like but it's not built yet. We've got the new museum down in the South Bank area here. Um, so you're ahead of your time? We're way ahead of our time actually, up to about 1996. There was light at the end of the tunnel when 1,000 limited edition prints of this intricate black and white line drawing were produced. The proceeds enabled the production of a colour version. Well, the colour version was the culmination of another six to 12 months' work. We had to uh, re-research some of the areas. Um, we updated the drawing and then there was a couple of artists that hand coloured it. It was like putting a huge... 7,000 piece jigsaw puzzle together. We had to refer back to every single photograph, find the building, and then match the colour of that building to the drawing. So it wasn't a simple task. It was very, very long and drawn out. The 112 by 77 centimetre colour poster of the map sells for $39.95, the half size version for $25. But the popularity of the hand painted limited edition maps keeps the fine brushes of artists Mark Jackson and Heather Potter busy. So how many hours do you think you've spent on this one so far? <laughs> Have you counted yet? Funny experiences along the way now form the basis of a can you find quiz that accompanies the map. 
Lovely. This particular fellow was uh, practicing golf right in front of a sign that said no golf practice. So we photographed him and he's on the map. Oh, where Deborah is he? Deborah drew him on right in the corner here. I shouldn't tell you, I shouldn't actually tell you this because this is part of our grid reference and can you find list, but I will. <laughs> he's just over here. There's a big paddle steam boat. Anyone lucky enough to have one of these spectacular maps will have no doubt spent hours scouring for helicopters, didgeridoo players and tall ships attempting to complete the quiz. There's a tram! Some of them aren't easy and I don't apologise for that. Can and you let us in on the secret? No, Where is the frog? Absolutely Where not. is the frog? It's the most asked questions. I've had, I've had messages on my answering machine. Obviously people have been up till very late at night trying to find it so they've left a message on the answering machine. Please ring us and tell them where the frog is. Melbourne map postcards and greeting cards are already available. And don't be surprised to see the map on tea towels and jigsaw puzzles soon. But with the bubbling enthusiasm of a budding entrepreneur, Melinda is preparing to tackle a new project. It's definitely going to lead on to other cities and, and in fact Sydney's down the track. It'll be, it'll be a lot quicker to do the next one because I, I, know, the, I know what I'm up against.